It's been said that you will never overcome your view of God. If you have a small view of God, you're going to have small faith, small courage, small obedience, small worship, small service, small impact. But if you have a big view of God, an accurate view of God, it's going to be the opposite. You'll have big faith, big obedience, big surrender, total uh, willingness to sacrifice for Him, powerful service for God. Your view of God changes everything about you. I really want to encourage you to get a more accurate view of how great and glorious our God is. Moses got a big view of God after seeing God rescue the Hebrews from bondage. They had been in slavery for 400 years and God sent 10 amazing miracles to deliver them. And then on top of that, he did an awesome thing. They're being chased by Pharaoh and his chariots and God opened up the Red Sea so they could walk through on dry land. And then when uh, Pharaoh and his chariots got in the middle of the Red Sea chasing him, God closed it and it drowned all of them, giving the children of Israel freedom and rescue. Moses said this, he wrote a song about it, and he said, Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy to pieces. And in the greatness of your excellency, you've overthrown those who rise against you. He's saying, God, you're great, and you're glorious, and I see it, and I believe it. But uh, Abraham's not the only one that saw this. Uh, Moses is not the only one that saw this. David saw this happen. After seeing God work in his life and giving him victory and ultimately making him king and, and blessing his kingdom, David said this. He says in 1 Chronicles 29, Therefore David blessed the Lord before all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever yours. O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and earth is yours. David had a big view of God, and it gave him a very effective life for God. At one point, he was being chased by Saul through the wilderness, and he was in a cave, and yet he came through that terrible, terrible time, hiding in a cave, hunted for his life. He came through that terrible time uh, successfully. How did he do it? Psalm 57 Verse 5 says, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory, your glorious majesty, be above all the earth. I want to encourage you. Get an understanding of who God is, and it will invoke in you blessing for God. God is great in His power. He's great in His strength. He's great in His miracles. And He's going to be great and glorious in His return. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 16, Verse 27, For the Son of Man will come in the glory of His Father and His angels, and He will reward each of us according to His works. Later on, it says, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. Jesus is coming again. Now, He laid down His glory to come to earth, to become one of us, to live a sinless life, to die on the cross, to rise again from the dead to ascend into heaven. And then he picked up his glory again. And he's coming back soon. And he's coming back to establish his kingdom, his domain, his glorious kingdom. And he's coming back in all his glory to rule, to reign, but first of all, to judge. He's coming back to judge us. We need to be prepared. How do I get prepared for that day when I'll stand before the glorious uh, Lord Jesus? I bow my knees to him now. I understand that He is the great and glorious God, and I yield my life to Jesus Christ today. That will ready me for His return tomorrow.